How does your radio receive signals or your microwave heat up food? The answer lies in the frequencies of electromagnetic waves. Frequencies, in the simplest terms, are the number of waves that pass a fixed point in a given amount of time, usually a second. These frequencies are measured in hertz. When we talk about electromagnetic waves, we're referring to a spectrum of waves characterized by different frequencies. The electromagnetic spectrum is an incredibly vast continuum, with frequencies ranging from extremely low to extraordinarily high. We divide this spectrum into different sections, each characterized by a distinct type of wave. Starting with the lowest frequencies, we encounter radio waves. These are the waves that carry signals to your radio or television. Increasing the frequency, we move to microwaves, used in radar and yes, your microwave oven. As we continue to ascend the spectrum, we encounter infrared waves, which we often associate with heat. They are emitted by all objects and are a primary component of thermal radiation. We can't see these waves, but we can feel them as heat. Next, we reach the visible light spectrum, the small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that human eyes can perceive. From red to violet, each color corresponds to a different frequency. Beyond the visible light, we find ultraviolet rays, which are responsible for giving us suntans and sunburns. Higher still are X-rays, which can penetrate our bodies, allowing us to see our bones. Finally, at the very top of the spectrum, we encounter gamma rays, the highest frequency waves, which carry a great deal of energy and are produced in nuclear reactions. So, each type of electromagnetic wave, from radio waves to gamma rays, corresponds to a different frequency. These frequencies are the key to how we harness and utilize electromagnetic waves in our daily lives and in scientific applications. So the next time you tune into a radio station or heat leftovers in the microwave, remember the power of frequencies in the electromagnetic spectrum. Did you know that heated objects emit electromagnetic radiation? That's thermal radiation for you. Let's dive deeper into this captivating phenomenon. When objects heat up, their atoms and molecules move around more energetically. This increased motion triggers the emission of electromagnetic waves, a process we refer to as thermal radiation. It's a universal occurrence with every object at a temperature above absolute zero emitting thermal radiation to some degree. Picture a warm summer's day. The heat you feel on your skin? That's largely due to thermal radiation from the sun. Our star emits a range of electromagnetic waves, but the ones that contribute most to the heat we experience are infrared waves. These are absorbed by our skin, causing the molecules there to vibrate more and making us perceive this as warmth. Now, consider a piece of metal being heated in a forge. As the temperature rises, the metal begins to glow, first a dull red, then yellow, and eventually white hot. This is a vivid demonstration of thermal radiation in action. The color changes correspond to different wavelengths of visible light emitted as the object heats up. But thermal radiation isn't just about feeling warm or observing glowing hot objects. It has significant implications in our daily lives and wide-ranging scientific applications. For instance, thermal imaging technology relies on detecting the infrared radiation emitted by objects. This technology is used in everything from night vision goggles to detecting heat leaks in buildings. In the realm of space science, thermal radiation helps us study celestial bodies. Planets, stars, and even galaxies emit thermal radiation, allowing astronomers to gather valuable information about their temperature, composition, and more. So, thermal radiation, a fascinating aspect of electromagnetic waves, plays a crucial role in keeping our planet warm. It's a phenomenon that illuminates our night skies, powers our technology, and helps us explore the universe. It's just another testament to the incredible versatility and importance of electromagnetic waves in our world. Polarization, a characteristic of electromagnetic waves, has remarkable applications in technology and communication. But what exactly is polarization? Well, it's the orientation of the oscillations in an electromagnetic wave, specifically the electric field component. Imagine a rope tied at one end and you're swinging it up and down at the other. The movement of the rope is similar to the oscillation in a polarized wave. If you swing the rope only up and down, you've made a wave with vertical polarization. Swing it left and right, and voila, you have horizontal polarization. Now let's add a twist. If you swing the rope in a circle, you've created circular polarization. And if you swing it in a figure eight, that's elliptical polarization. It's quite astounding to see how the orientation of electric fields in waves can create different types of polarization. But why does this matter, you might ask? 
Let's delve into the practical applications of polarized light. You've probably seen the effect of polarization if you've ever worn polarized sunglasses. These glasses have a special coating that filters out horizontally polarized light, which is often associated with glare. This makes everything look clearer and reduces eye strain. Pretty cool, right? Another application can be seen in the screens of our LCD televisions and computer monitors. These screens work by manipulating polarized light to create the images we see. The liquid crystal layer in these screens twists the polarization of light, allowing it to pass through a polarizer and create the colors and images on the screen. Polarization also plays a crucial role in communication systems. For instance, radio signals are often polarized to prevent interference and boost the signal strength. So, as we can see, polarization is not just a quirky characteristic of electromagnetic waves, but a fundamental property that has numerous practical applications. From LCD screens to sunglasses, the magic of polarization is all around us. Ever wondered how your television receives signals? That's the interference of electromagnetic waves at play. Now, let's delve into the fascinating world of interference. Interference, in the context of electromagnetic waves, refers to the process where two or more waves combine to create a resultant wave. This happens when electromagnetic waves meet and superimpose or overlap each other. The resulting wave can be stronger, weaker, or even cancel out, depending on the phase and amplitude of the original waves. This is why interference is often described as a dance of waves, constantly reinforcing and cancelling each other in a mesmerizing ebb and flow. Imagine throwing two pebbles into a pond at the same time. You would see waves rippling out from each point where the pebbles hit the water. When these waves meet, they interfere with each other, creating a new pattern of waves. This is a simple way to visualize the process of interference. Now, let's take a look at a classic example of interference, the double slit experiment. When light passes through two closely spaced slits, it behaves like two separate wave sources. Where the waves meet, they interfere, creating a fascinating pattern of light and dark fringes on a screen. This is a perfect demonstration of the wave-like nature of light, a fundamental aspect of quantum mechanics. But the magic of interference isn't confined to laboratories. It plays a crucial role in our everyday lives too, particularly in technologies like radio and television. When you tune your radio, you're essentially adjusting the frequency of your receiver to match that of a specific radio station. The receiver then picks up the station's signal and ignores all others, thanks to the principle of interference. Similarly, your television antenna receives multiple signals, separates them based on their frequency, and decodes them into the shows you love. Without interference, we wouldn't have the joy of watching our favorite shows or listening to our favorite music. So, the next time you switch on your radio or television, take a moment to appreciate the invisible dance of waves that makes it all possible. Why is the sky blue? The answer lies in the scattering of electromagnetic waves. Scattering is a fascinating process that dramatically impacts how electromagnetic waves, or light, travels through various mediums. It's the reason why we perceive the sky as blue, the reason why sunsets paint the sky in shades of red and orange, and the reason why clouds appear white. Imagine a beam of light as a group of energetic dancers moving in a straight line. When these dancers encounter particles along their path, they scatter in different directions, just like our beam of light scatters when it encounters particles in the atmosphere. The color of the sky is a remarkable demonstration of scattering. Sunlight, which is a mix of all colors, hits the Earth's atmosphere. The particles and molecules in the atmosphere scatter short wavelength light, such blue and violet light, to the sides and back towards the Earth, more so than the long wavelength light, such as red and yellow. However, the violet light is absorbed by the atmosphere and then re-emitted in different directions. The blue light is scattered in all directions, but because we see the blue light from everywhere overhead, the sky appears blue. But scattering isn't just about creating beautiful natural phenomena. It also plays a crucial role in scientific research and technology development. In remote sensing, for instance, scientists rely on the scattering of electromagnetic waves to gather information about the Earth's surface and atmosphere. Satellites send down beams of light which scatter upon hitting the Earth's surface. The scattered light is then collected and analyzed, providing valuable data on everything from vegetation cover to atmospheric composition. In atmospheric studies, scattering helps researchers understand the composition and behavior of the atmosphere. By studying how light scatters as it passes through the atmosphere, 
they can identify different gases and particles and track changes over time. Next time you admire the blue sky, remember the role of scattering in this beautiful phenomenon? Reflection and refraction are fundamental behaviors of electromagnetic waves that power many aspects of our daily lives. But what exactly are they, and how do they impact the way we interact with the world around us? Let's start with reflection. In the realm of electromagnetic waves, reflection occurs when a wave hits a surface that it cannot pass through and bounces back. This is the principle that powers the humble mirror. Light waves, a type of electromagnetic wave, hit the mirror and bounce back, allowing us to see our own reflection. But it's not just about vanity. Reflection is also used in radar systems, where radio waves bounce off objects to determine their location and speed. Now, let's turn to refraction. Unlike reflection, refraction involves a change in direction of the wave as it passes from one medium to another. This is due to a change in speed, which in turn is influenced by the properties of the mediums involved. It's refraction that makes a pencil look bent when you dip it in a glass of water, or creates the beautiful colors of a rainbow as sunlight refracts or bends in droplets of water in the atmosphere. But the applications of refraction go far beyond these simple examples. In the world of telecommunications, refraction is a critical element in the design of fiber optic cables. These cables transmit data as pulses of light. The light waves are contained within the cable through a process of total internal reflection, a special kind of refraction. This allows data to travel long distances at high speeds, powering our internet and telephone systems. From mirrors to fiber optic cables, reflection and refraction are integral to our modern world. They are yet another testament to the remarkable versatility and utility of electromagnetic waves, shaping our understanding of the universe and powering the technologies that define our daily lives.